Hi, my name is Megan Darrow from 10 Second Studio. I want to show you how to make a cool piece of artwork today out of metal. To get started, I use the A to Z of Metal Works. 10 Second Studio just came out with it, and it has a DVD that goes over the tips and how to emboss a metal. And the CD is great because it has the alphabet, some phrases, and also some images. So I downloaded the phrase love you from there. I blew it up 200%. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go over it with a permanent marker. And you can see how there's the red outline on the front. If you flip it over, you'll have the outline of Love You on the back. So let's get started on some other tools that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the matte set from 10 Second Studio. It's a piece of acrylic. That's a great hard surface to use. It's a thin matte also that is great for the wheels and refining on and the thick mat for puffing and using the ball tool. I just have a piece of aluminum. This is a 38 gauge piece of aluminum. It's actually aluminum metal, but it has a red coating on it. And we're not gonna be using the red coating part. It's gonna be the back of our project. We're gonna use the aluminum part for the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over real quick and I wanna tape Love You in the middle of the back of the metal. And I'm gonna kind of center it. You don't have to be precise. You don't have to measure, just kind of center it and do that. I want to take my tool from kit number five. It's the Teflon tip tool. I like to use this tool because it has a pointed edge to it and it gets into all the detail. So I'm just going to trace that. I'm just going to go around the red ink and trace it. Now when I trace it, I want to apply a little bit of pressure. I don't want to apply too much because I don't want to rip the metal, but I want to apply enough pressure so it goes through the piece of paper onto the metal. Now I already have a piece of metal that's been traced right here. You can see that it's debossed image, but when you flip it over, the love you reads on the right side or the correct side, and you see the image come through. Now to make the love you pop even more, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away the thin mat, and I'm gonna use my Teflon tip tool again, and I'm just gonna go and refine right around that metal. And like I said, it's just making the metal pop. And when I'm doing this, I wanna move my metal as I work, so it'd be easier for me to refine around. I don't want to color when I refine, I just want to do a straight line and get it as close to the actual Love You as possible. And you can see how the Love You now pops. Now to make it even pop more, I'm going to use my thick mat and just put it underneath the metal and flip the metal over. So this is the back side again. And I'm going to use my paper stump and I'm doing a coloring motion and I'm just pressing you know, you want to apply some pressure, but you don't want to apply too much pressure where you're ripping the metal. So I'm just applying some pressure and I'm going to flip this back over and take away my thick mat. And now I'm going to refine around that L and that's going to press down the metal. So it gives a clean, crisp look to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish puffing the rest of the letters. I'm going to put my thick mat back underneath, flip the metal over. And I'm just going to go over the letters. I'm not going to do the whole letter itself. I'm just going to do sections of the letter because it's going to add more texture to the finished piece and you will actually see it pop even more. I'm going to flip this back over and I'm going to remove my thick mat and just go back around and refine where I puff the image. And you can see how it's popping a lot more now that I'm refining around the actual letter. So now you can see how it's actually popping. Okay, to add a decorative edge to this piece of artwork, I'm going to bring in my skinny mini mold. It's a hard plastic mold that has a decorative little vine on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my metal over and in one of the corners, I'm just going to place the mold and use a piece of tape to hold the mold down. I'm going to flip my metal back over and with my paper stump, I'm going to go over the metal. And you can see how the image is coming through. It's a very faint image, but don't worry because we're going to refine around that and actually make it pop even more. So once I get to this point, I'm going to take my Teflon tip tool, my round edge Teflon tip tool from kit number five. I like to use it because it's easier to work with the, with the molds and refine around the metal and the mold. You can see how it's pressing into the crevices of the mold and it's making the metal more defined. You can see how I use the mold on these two opposite corners. Now these corners are looking a little bit bare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my decorative wheels on the other corners. So I'm just going to grab these wheels out real quick. And the wheels are really cool because they have different patterns on them. 
it gives a different effect whenever you run the wheel across the metal. And I'm just gonna start on one corner and I'm just gonna go down and this is kind of like a stitch texture. So it looks like it has a little stitch going through the metal. Now I'm gonna use one that has finer dots. And I'm just gonna crisscross these lines. You can see how it has a little finer dots. And this one has a little bit of wider dots. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite corner. And you can see how it gives just a great look to the edge of this corner. Now everybody asks me, how do I keep my metal from deflating or from people pushing it in? This is just a lightweight spackle. I don't like to use the regular spackle because it's too heavy and it will weigh down your artwork. And I'm just gonna apply it over the metal. And I'm just gonna scrape it as I apply it because I want the spackle to be even with my metal. I don't want the spackle to be bulging off of my metal. And it takes about an hour or so to have the spackle actually dry completely. Here's one that's dried, it's nice and flush. There's no spackle that's bulging out. I'm gonna flip this over and can see how this looks fabulous. Now it can look even better if you add some ink to it. And I just pour a generous amount of alcohol ink, kind of squirt it all over the place. And let me put a different color on there too. And don't be afraid to go nuts with this because that's why you have it. You wanna just go nuts and apply as much ink as you want. Now I have an applicator. It is a Velcro stamp that has a piece of felt on it. And all I'm gonna do is use the applicator to kind of stamp around the ink and move it around. And you can see how the ink is getting into all the little crevices of my artwork. You don't wanna see any aluminum just yet. And if you don't like this color, you can always go back and add some more ink. It's up to you. And like I said, just go nuts with it. Don't be afraid. I'm gonna put this aside and it's gonna take a couple seconds for the ink to dry. Now that it's dried, I'm gonna go ahead and take my cushion sandpaper and I'm just gonna go and rub that all over the metal. Now this is gonna take off the top part of that coat of ink that you just put on, but don't worry because the aluminum metal is gonna show through. And you can see how I'm just going all over the metal. Okay, looks like I'm finished. Now you can see how it has a rustic feel. Now once I get to this step, I wanna flip the metal over and put tape on the back. This is our Humongo adhesive tape. So I'm just going to put that on the back. This is very strong so it sticks to pretty much anything and everything. Okay, now that it's down, I'm going to go ahead and take off the backing of the tape. And you can see how the tape is just overlapping the metal. Not to worry because what we can do is just pull back that tape onto the back of the metal. You will never even know. So I folded the corners over. Now I'm going to bring in my book board. Before I even started this project, I went ahead and took some acrylic paints, a rust color, a green color, and a beige color, and just kind of dry brushed this on the corners or around the book board. Now what I'm going to do with my piece of metal is I'm going to flip it over and kind of center this into my book board. And I just kind of want to be precise and press the metal onto the book board. Okay, so here's our finished piece. Doesn't this look cool? Now I also did a really cool scrapbook page. I used the metal on here, a larger piece of metal. I used the wheels, the ball and cup, and of course that love you with the puff letters. Okay, and this is my first piece that I ever did. I used a stencil, I just traced around that stencil and I puffed out the heart. Now if I turn this over, you can see how much spackle I put in there. Now if I use regular spackle, this would be very heavy, but since I use the lightweight spackle, it's very light. Now, I had a great time with you guys, and I hope to see you again. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.